Greetings, everyone. I hope everyone today is having a good day because today I'm going to talk about a game I really, really liked when I was a young kid, simply known as the game that makes Dungeons and Dragons or Skyrim or whatever you want fantasy elements into a more cohesive game. That also was totally not a copy of Minecraft, but in the best way you could possibly imagine. You know, it's interesting because this is what makes it in itself a unique experience, and that's what we're going to get into today. So if you enjoy my videos and you want to see more content, give it a like, subscribe, all that stuff. Block Story is a sandbox style game that uses elements of adventure and exploration. The name speaks for itself. Obviously, it is inspired off Minecraft like many, many other voxel games. Trust me, there are many, as you probably know. But this one differs in its ability to be compelling through quests and its RPG style of gameplay. It makes you realize that it isn't just a Minecraft clone in the typical sense. I won't reveal too many features of the game because that would be a dick move on my part. And I want you to figure out some features for yourself since it is story driven. However, I will mention the important aspects and general information, you know, to give you somewhat of a review. Anyways, you explore a vast world just like in Minecraft where you gather resources such as wood, stone, and various ores to craft weapons and armor, etc. These include the epic sword, the dark axe, the crystal sword, and I guess machine guns because, you know, you gotta have them machine guns. Speaking of mining, the tunnels extend pretty far down, and that is not an exaggeration. You start with the caverns being open, large spaces, um, sometimes you'll find lava pools and other materi materials such as iron, gold, coal, and sulfur in volcanoes, which is interesting because the moon Io in real life is full of sulfur and volcanoes, but anyways, that's besides the point. In the older versions of the game, was a layer called Moria. Unfortunately, this feature was removed and the area was always pretty dark with lanterns scattered around and you'd get chased around by little green goblins. Underneath Moria, which is still in the current version, is Hades, pretty much by its name, another name for the underworld, or nether but in a different context. And this region was always difficult. Of course, hell needs to be difficult because every game makes Holy shit, I just had like a bubble in my throat, which is the weird feeling to get. Yeah, every game, I think, a lot of sandbox games, but just games in general, hell seems to be a hard, difficult place. The opposite of the underworld was a region known simply as the Forgotten Sky, or the Aether. A series of floating islands far above the ground, occasionally featuring grand temples, and on these islands, you can find special types of resources and ore called kryptonite and chlorium. I think that's how you say it. The designs for the mobs in this game are honestly like super detailed, way more detailed than I thought they would be. I don't know, they look like they're copied and pasted from like another fantasy genre game. It doesn't ruin me, and here's why. I'm not sure if the models were from other games originally, but whoever made them to begin with did a good good job. It really fits the style of the game because it's just sort of all over the place. Like some stuff is blocks, some stuff isn't blocks. The items aren't really blocks, but then you have blocks, if that makes sense. It's like an arts and crafts project with random spices of creativity meshed together and somehow ends up hey, still yo, looking good. What? Baldi's Basics, I, I think is an example of simplicity turning into actual merit. Some more aesthetic, while others are more simplistic. An example of some of these mobs are the werewolves, a hostile creature that spawns in the forest or rock biome and are very stealthy, which means they run fast and burn in the daylight. Yeah, I don't know where they got that from. Different variants of dragons exist. In different biomes, the regular dragons, which are red can be found in the underworld while the ice dragons is a mini boss found in snowy forests and a bit weaker than the regular dragon and finally the ash core is found in the forgotten sky a powerful boss that requires a good level of skill to fight the themes that reside too in block story is the many bosses you will come across and fight over the course of different quests of the story remember it's block story not minecraft or mind story or mind block 
The biggest problem with this game in my eyes are the organization of the inventory. I do like when you level up, it allows you access for more inventory space, a nice touch for upgrades and motivation to have the ability to get more items without having to place them down like a chest or something is convenient for crafting and to have on hand. Especially because in games such as Terraria, inventory becomes a very vast problem and the inventory gets bigger and bigger and bigger depending on your level. That's clever. It's a nice touch on upgrades and the ability for more items like I said and more items having more items without having to place them down is convenient both for crafting and to have on hand. Some of the neutral mobs are pretty integral to the story and the quests that give you the ability to find and collect resources and to fight monsters and bosses etc. Aaron is one of the main NPCs. He-Man looking ass gives daily quests and a main quest line depending on the version of the game. Their quest line can have different tasks but ultimately were configured to be more suitable for gameplay sake and simplicity. Some other neutral mobs you can find are pretty easily and early on such as Paula, apparently from the same kingdom as Arun, that's what I read on the wiki, Ted a dwarf, very short dwarf, the alchemist, and the wizard, each gives varying difficulties of tasks. Essentially the wizard is the guide in Terraria in this situation. The wizard is the first NBC you talk to for one and he finds your character unconscious on the beach. It serves as a skin suit tutorial including walking around and jumping and uh, finding resources, what you need to craft, getting torches, crafting table, get a house, surviving, helpful for all that stuff. So I guess he's more than the guide because the guide doesn't exactly help in many ways. We all know that. The wizard will quest you to kill spiders and collect poison to heal a baby dragon. That is the mission he'll ask you once you've done all the basic necessities for your character. The old music for this game and the newer music are very different, but whoever created these compositions to begin with is, I think is very talented and uh, deserves all the praise in the world. I went back and played this game again and a lot has changed in terms of texture design too. Oh boy, the old textures look like they used to be JPEG images. J JPEG images. JPEG. Oh my god. I went back and played this game again and a lot has changed in terms of texture design, trust me. The old textures look like they were used JPEG images, textures over the blocks. But weirdly enough, they fit the environment and aesthetic of this game. As I said previously, while the new textures are more faithful to the uh, vanilla Minecraft simplistic pixel style of most sandbox games such as Survival Craft and even Minecraft, this whole experience offers a wide variety of resources, weapons, and tools, even including sci-fi elements such as the jetpack, mech suit, and submarine. It's not afraid to go beyond the fantasy elements and blend some new and interesting ideas that aren't traditionally thought of in a fantasy RPG setting. That's what I like about Terraria, and it's the same pretty wacky items that have nothing to do with the setting, but it's hard to classify Terraria and even this game into, into one setting, I suppose. You don't think of submarines when you think of Lord of the Rings in that context, for example. Uh, it's still awesome that you realize in a quest RPG, but also a hybrid of Minecraft, you can create a giant town or city with blocks and there's some furniture. And it's better than nothing. Minecraft says they'll never add furniture, so there's that. Maybe not to the same extent as Minecraft, but certainly enough for the imagination to go wild in terms of building. The variety isn't as much, but it's still equal in your ability to create. Having creativity certainly helps in Sandbox, because that's precisely the point plus other elements. Did I also mention the splash sounds are the same exact sound from Minecraft? As of late, this game has been around since 2010, meaning it was one of the first Minecraft clones to appear, but the more recent update was in 2020. Unfortunately, this was four years ago. No shit. Many of these games, after a while, just let go because the developers move on, and with a small team, maybe even only one or two people, managing an entire project for thousands of people 
becomes all the more stressful as a task leading to burnout. Imagine you having an entire audience of people and you're one guy and you make a trailer that gets a hundred thousand views. Oh shit. Be my response. Although the 2020 update, the Outer Worlds update was incredible in what I've seen and it accomplished what it was out expanding itself to do. A brand new biome inspired off the end. If you want to explore the world and creative, well that's fine too. And going underwater, I always used to do that, and I found the Atlantis City. If you go deep down far enough, you feel like Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan. If you want to check out the game out on Steam, it's definitely available here. And I'm not sure if it's still available on the App Store, but if I link it in the description, it should say it for itself. Check out my other content. Alright, see you guys.